The reason we want to test the soil and try to find a date is to try to narrow down the great debate over the giant. And we're still dealing with a huge, broad brush of time, aren't we? Going way back to the prehistoric period, right up to the 17th century. So narrowing that down will narrow down the stories and help us to make a better narrative for him. I met a guy called Mike Allen, who's an environmental archaeologist, and we went out to CERN and we looked at him and we tried to work out the best place to get the samples we would need to get these optically stimulated luminescence dates from him. The trenches and the manufacture and the way the giant's been constructed is completely different. We found deposits that we never thought would be here. So we've got hill wash, which is soil wash, before the giant was built. So we're going to be able to tell a picture of what the landscape was like before the giant walked across it until much later. And then we collect some samples, which are nice and light tight. We keep them in a, in a dark tube, which we're going to hammer into the section. And then when we're back in the lab, it's kind of dark room, photographic processing conditions, red light. And under those controlled lighting conditions, we can extract the sample. We can chemically and physically isolate the quartz within the sediment. And that quartz has got the datable signal in. So these soil samples say they were taken right down against the chalk in the colluvial deposits in the little dip of soil at the bottom. And that says that that soil couldn't be earlier than 700 AD. So he's definitely not built before 700 AD. That's the key thing. The archaeologists and the archaeological science are doing is that people like Martin are helping paint the picture of the giant. Our scientists from Gloucester University are pinpointing when in time he occurred. And as an environmental archaeologist and environmental scientist, I'm painting the picture of the landscape in which he sat. We had a chat, the soil scientist, the OSL specialist and myself, acting as agent provocateur and um, historian archaeologist. And it seems that uh, though we can say an earlier state, we can't be sure about a later state. It, it's still definitely earlier than 1694. But our date range does seem to indicate that he's medieval at the earliest. So I wonder whether he was created very early on, perhaps in the late Saxon period, and that he grasped over and was forgotten that at some stage, in low sunlight, people saw that figure on the hill, and at some stage they decided to recut him again. What is this thing? What would it be like if? And they did. It's a theory. It's a nice one. Another theory to put in the pot. But for, it works in my archaeological section drawings, that's the thing. And it reassures me of the abbey being there and not mentioning it in any of its records. And in the Tudor surveys, they talk about this earthwork called the Trendle, where they do maypole dancing at the top of the hill, just above the giant. And it's called Trendle Hill, it's not called Giant Hill. In the 16th century, it's as though he's not there. But the good thing is, I think, he still does have an air of mystery. Uh, we haven't sorted it out completely, so I think everyone's happy.